COVID-19 crisis has brought about unprecedented changes in our lives. We find ourselves in situations not of our own choosing, but imposed by external circumstances. Now this means that in order for us to save the academic year 2020, we also have to take into consideration the principle of saving lives, which is more primary. Many of our colleges have made initiatives to ensure that they support students in remote learning. This includes lessons which are broadcast on How TV, which are then packaged and distributed to you, the students, via WhatsApp, our department's uh, website, and also various institutions' website. These lessons are meant to support you in this particular crisis over and above the fewer and shorter lectures, contact lectures that you will be getting, these lessons will be more valuable for you to be able to pass in this particular academic year. We therefore call on all students not to see this as a moment of despair, but to see this as an opportunity to use all these available resources to support your own learning and teaching. I wish you all the best. Let's save lives. Let's save the academic year 2020. Hello, I boys is my name, a lecturer at TV, Obi TV College. I'll be giving a presentation on applied, therm applied thermodynamics, steam plant, which is one of the topics that are in the N6 permissions syllabus. In applied thermodynamics, the most important thing that you have to know is the flow diagram of steam and the flue gases. Once you understand the flow diagram of the steam and the flue gases, then it's easier to solve the problems by applying the knowledge that you have already from N5 power machines. With the diagram to follow. And here's the diagram of the steam plant, a simplified diagram. Okay, we have feed water entering the economizer with an enthalpy, specific heat, and I mean specific enthalpy, H1. Then here's our economizer. The feed water gains heat inside the economizer, and then it's its specific enthalpy increases to H2. From the economizer, this feed water goes to the evaporator. Then its enthalpy increases to H3. Again, the feed water gains heat in the evaporator. The enthalpy increases to H3. After the evaporator, the feed water, I mean, in the evaporator, the feed water turns into wet steam. This wet steam then goes to the superheater, which turns the wet steam into superheated steam. Yeah, from the evaporator, the wet steam goes to the superheater. It then gains, the, gains heat in the superheater. Its specific enthalpy increases to H4 by absorbing heat from the flue gases. But then, I'm not, I haven't shown the flow diagram of the flue gases. Here's our simplified diagram of the steam plant. We have feed water entering the economizer, and then enthalpy H1, then gains heat in the economizer, the enthalpy increases to H2. After the, the economizer goes into the evaporator, its enthalpy increases to H3, it gains heat again in the superheater. And then the enthalpy changes to H4. After the superheater, we have a superheated steam. Now we'll be going to, I'll be drawing the flow diagram of the flue gases. Where does this feed water get energy from? It gets energy from the flue gases. We'll be having 
fuel, fuel and air. In fact, let me draw air first. We have air from, from the atmosphere. Here is air coming from the atmosphere. This air goes into the air preheater. goes into the air preheater to absorb the energy from the flue gases, leaving the economizer. Then its temperature increases to, to another temperature, to a higher temperature. The initial temperature would be TA1. And then the temperature increases to TA2. TA the heated air then combines with fuel. We'll be having fuel. Here's our fuel. Fuel combines with the heated air, and then a combustion occurs. The products of combustion are very hot. We'll be having very hot gases, very hot gas gases called flue gas. This is the product of combustion, like as you know, from N5. Those carbon, the combustion of carbon plus oxygen, then it produces carbon dioxide from N2 sulfur plus oxygen, sulfur dioxide, and some other compounds that are combustible. Those are the flue gases. After combustion, they go into the evaporator. Oops. The flue gas goes into the evaporator. The initial temperature will be, let's say, T1, Tg1. In the evaporator, there's heat transfer between this flue gas and the steam inside the evaporator. But the, there's no mixing of the steam in the evaporator and the flue gas. The temperature of the flue gas will drop to Tg2. As it loses heat to the steam, its temperature drops. Then becomes Tg2. From the evaporator, the flue gas goes into the superheater. Its temperature again decreases as it loses energy to the steam inside the superheater. The temperature decreases to Tg3. After the superheater, the flue gas goes into the economizer. And then it exchanges heat with the steam inside the economizer. Its temperature again drops to a lower temperature, Tg4. After the economizer, the flue gas still possesses some, some energy, but we want to extract some energy from the flue gas in order to make this implant more efficient. And therefore, we'll extract some more energy in the air preheater. We'll remove energy from the flue gas in the air preheater. Then after the air preheater, the temperature of the flue gas will drop again to Tg5. The air from the atmosphere will be gaining energy from the energy that is lost by the flue gas in the air preheat will be gained by the I mean by the air from the environment, from the atmosphere. Then after the air preheater, we'll be having this steam going to the chimney base, to the chimney stack. Here's our chimney stack. Then it goes to the atmosphere. There is the flow diagram of steam and feed water in the steam plant. Once you understand this diagram, it's easy to solve the problems associated with steam plant. And now, after this diagram, 
we'll be doing some calculations on the heat transfer in the various components of our plant. Heat transfer in those components, like the economizer, for instance. Heat transfer in the economizer. I'll only draw the economizer in this case. We'll be having our economizer. Steam enters, I mean feed water, enters the economizer at an enthalpy, H1. And then it leaves the economizer with an enthalpy, H2. How does this steam, I mean, how does this feed water in energy. There's heat transfer between the feed water, feed water, and the flue gases entering the economizer. We'll be having our flue, flue gas entering the economizer at a temperature, maybe say for instance, temperature T1, Tg1. And then its temperature drops to a lower temperature, T, Tg2. From the law of conservation of energy, the heat lost by the flue gases inside the economizer is equal to the, I mean the heat gained by the feed water inside the economizer. Then heat. Heat gained by feed water is equal to the heat lost by the flue gas and then in equation form the heat gained by feed water would be equal to the mass of steam, mass of steam, ms, times the change in enthalpy of steam, ms into h2 minus h1. This is the heat gain by, by feed water in the economizer. And then it should be equal to the heat lost by the flue gases in the economizer. And then the heat lost by the flue gas in the economizer would be equal to the mass of the flue gases times the specific capacity of the flue gas, Cp, multiplied by the change in temperature of the flue gas. The final temperature of the flue gas, in fact, it would be the initial temperature of the flue gas, Tg1, minus the final temperature of the flue gas, why final minus, I mean, in most cases, the change in temperature, they say final minus initial, but in this case, I've written it as initial minus final because the final temperature, I mean, the initial temperature is greater than the final temperature. In order to make this equation positive on the right-hand side and also positive on the left-hand side, that's why I've written initial minus final, not final minus initial. And the same equation I can applies in the superheater. It will be the heat gained by, by steam. I mean, the heat gained by steam here in the superheater is equal to the heat lost by the flue gases in the superheater. And also in the air preheater, the heat lost by the flue gas in the air preheater is equal to the heat gained by air in the preheater. Then we'll be going to the heat balance sheet. But before we go to the heat balance sheet, we have to do some calculations on the heat carried away by, by the moisture. 
he'd carried away by the combustion moisture at the chimney. And he'd carried away by the dry flue gases. Mm, before doing a balance sheet, we have two more calculations that we have to do. The heat carried away by the dry flue gases and the heat carried away by moisture in the combustion products. Heat carried away by the dry flue gases. Dry flues. Q, let's say QG, it carried away by dry flues would be equal to the mass of dry flues. Mg, mass of dry flues, multiplied by the specific capacity of the dry flues, then times the change in temperature of the dry flues, Mc delta T, the initial temperature of the dry flues. I mean the final temperature of the dry flues minus the initial temperature of the dry flues. Qg is equal to mg mass of dry flues times Cp into the final temperature of the dry flues minus the initial temperature of the dry flues. So the final temperature of the dry flues would be the temperature at which the dry flues leaves the steam plant, which is Tg5. So our final temperature in this case would be Tg5 minus the initial temperature of the dry flues, which would be the temperature at which the dry flues were formed, or the temperature of the air in this case, Ta, or the boiler room temperature. It will be Ta1, Ta1 in that sketch, in that flow diagram. This is in most cases, in most questions, they refer to this initial temperature of the dry flues as the boiler room temperature. Let's say this is the boiler room temperature. Or the atmospheric temperature. Boiler room temperature or atmospheric temperature. And that's the equation for the heat carried away by the dry flue gases. Another equation would be the heat carried away by the moisture, combustion moisture. The next equation is the heat carried away by the moisture, the combustion moisture. And this moisture that is formed during combustion is the product of hydrogen. Hydrogen combining with air produces moisture, H2O. That's the moisture that I'm referring to. And let's call it QM. It carried away by moisture would be equal to the mass of moisture, MM, multiplied by The final enthalpy of moisture, H2, minus the initial enthalpy of H1. QM, heat carried away by moisture, is equal to mass of moisture into H2. This H2 is the final enthalpy of moisture, which you can get from the steam tables. Depending on the Depending on the temperature and pressure of the moisture at the chimney base, you just read from the steam tables. If you're given the final temperature of the moisture and the pressure at the chimney base, you can just read this off from steam tables. This H2. And then this initial enthalpy of moisture, you'll get it using this symbol equation, specific capacity of moisture from N5. I mean, specific capacity of water times the boiler room temperature, in this case, 
TA1, let's say TA1. Boiler room temperature times TA1. And that's the equation for the heat carried away by moisture. You can see from these equations, sometimes you are required to calculate the mass of moisture formed. You just look for an equation that has the mass of moisture. Or use another equation, the mass balance equation. You don't have to memorize the equation. You just only use common sense or simple logic. Let me say simple logic. Mm, to get these masses, we know that A combines with fuel. A plus fuel forms the dry flues. It will form dry flues, dry flue gas. Dry flues plus moisture And then plus ash or non-combustible products. We could say ash or non-combustible products. If our fuel has, I mean, products that are not that cannot be burned, then we replace this a uh, everything by its mass. Uh, M a for the mass of a, and then M f for the mass of fuel, plus then equal to the mass of dry flues plus mass of moisture and then plus mass of ash or non-combustibles and C. Uncombustibles. You can see this symbol logic. A plus fuel forms those dry flues plus moisture and ash. If nothing is referred to, I mean concerning non-combustibles. We can take this as zero, if nothing is mentioned, I mean concerning ash, or non-combustibles. This we can take to be zero. And then we can divide all through by MF. Say MA over MF plus MF over MF is equal to MG over MF plus mass of fuel, I mean mass of moisture, over the mass of fuel, plus the mass of ash, or the mass of non-combustibles, over the mass of fuel. Because in most questions, you are given the mass of fuel, I mean the mass of air per kilogram of fuel. And then again, you might be given the mass of moisture formed per kilogram of fuel used. That's why I've divided both sides of the equation by the mass of fuel used. Because in some questions, in most questions, you are given this mass is per kilogram of fuel. And that's our equation. MA over MF plus 1 is equal to MG over MF plus mm over mf plus mass of non-combustibles over mf. And like I said before, if nothing is referred to concerning the mass of non-combustibles, so if there's no ash formed, you can take this as zero. That's the equation. You don't have to memorize it. You just have to understand that when you I mean, when you combine air and fuel, dry flue gas is formed, and moisture also plus ash. That's the logic behind this equation. In applied thermodynamics, in this chapter, the most important thing that you have to know is the flow diagram of the feed water. And the flow of air to produce the flue gas, and the sequence in which this flue gas flows through the various components of the plant. Once you understand this flow diagram, it, sim it becomes simpler to solve the questions. To solve the questions, you just apply the knowledge that you have from N5 power machines. All right, that's all for the day. In the next lesson, we'll be doing some calculations using applying the concept that we have just 
that I've explained in this lesson. See you in the next lesson with the calculations. The COVID-19 pandemic has a serious impact on the college system. It has reduced the interaction between the students and the lecturers, hence affecting the academic year 2020. We are now forced to look into the alternative methods or ways of increasing interaction without violating COVID-19 regulations. This includes broadcasting on TV, radio, and using other social media platforms. Students are encouraged to use all the platforms made available so that we can save the academic year 2020. Working together, we can beat this. Hashtag save lives, hashtag save the academic year 2020.